Merry meet everyone, it is Nina, you are watching Fairy Chamber channel. Before you think I have completely lost my mind, I have not. <laughs> I am just um, practicing my outfit, testing my outfit for a Comic Con next week and I see you can guess I'm going there as Snow White. But then I thought this is a nice opportunity to make a video about the fairy tale origins of Snow White. Um, it is very interesting and fascinating story development from 18th century till this day. So the first version of Snow White, it is a novel from 1782 called Richilde. And this novel was written by a man called Johann Karl August Musaus. I hope I pronounced the last name right. Musaus? Something like that. And the book was called Folkmärchen der Deutsche, the folk tales of the German people. Or they call it fairy tale collection, but these stories really were not for kids. So this particular novel, well it's like a small novel, it is called Rischilde. And Richilde was the as evil stepmother in this story, and she had a stepdaughter called Blanca. And you know, there we have first connection to the idea of Snow White. Um, Blanca, I think that is Spanish for white or uh, light. I, I'm not sure. Or Latin, something like that. Oh, well, anyway. <laughs> The story is the story has all these elements that we know from the Snow White fairy tale. There is then evil stepmother Richilde, and she is very jealous to her stepdaughter Blanca because Richilde she has a magic mirror and she asks the mirror 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 on the wall who is the fairest of them all. And when Blanca is sixteen, the mirror does not reply, you my queen, but Mirror says that Blanca is the fairest of these lands. And Richelde becomes really mad, really jealous, and she wants to kill Blanca. And this story does not have dwarves living in a cabin. This story, Blanca remains as a rich girl because she has her own castle when Richilde has her own castle. So Blanca, she lives in her own castle and she has uh, seven little dwarf servants and <laughs> she lives with them. And they are like, um, well not really minors, but like um, court men, servants, something like that. So she lives with her servants and they dwarves serve her. Unlike in Grimm's Brothers fairy tale where the it's vice versa. She is their maid. <laughs> anyway, in this story of Musaus, um Blanca has her own castle where she lives with the dwarves in the magical castle. So Rishude, she goes to her court doctor and doctor gives her some poison and she makes this poison gift basket or a bunch of poisoned gifts and she asks one of her court ladies to dress up as an old hag or a beggar and takes to take those poisoned gifts to the castle and Blanca she dies because of these poisons and <laughs> this is where the story gets a bit creepy. She dies because of those poisons and they, the dwarves, they create her a beautiful glass coffin and there she lies. And they take her in that coffin to the crypt of the castle. And then there is a handsome young count who has heard about this beautiful princess who sleeps in a glass coffin. So he asked the dwarves, can I see her? And then he was in love with this beautiful princess who is lying there in a coffin. And 
he has a relic from a saint, some kind of relic. And with that relic, he wakes up Blanca from her magical dream with a relic, not with a true love skin. So then Blanca wakes up and she falls in love with the Count and they start to plan how to revenge to the evil stepmother and they come up with a, with a plan. So the Count, he goes to the Richelieu's castle and he starts to flatter her and soon uh, Richelieu wants to marry this Count and then when they are planning starting to have wedding of Richelde and the Count, uh, the dwarves and Snow, Blanca and the Count, they have plot against Richelde. Suddenly the weddings of Richelde and the Count are becoming weddings of Blanca and the Count. The dwarves, they have prepared these burning steel slippers that they will put to the feet of Richelde and Richelde she's um, forced to dance around the ballroom wearing those burning slippers and then after that she is forced to watch uh, Blanca and the Count getting married and then she is said to look into a tower wearing those hot burning slippers and thinking all her bad deeds that's the end of the story so really this first version of Snow White really was not meant for kids. It was like a, almost a Harlequin romance novel for adults with fantasy elements. And it's really interesting the way dwarves are depicted in this story from 1782. Because during that time in Europe Unfortunately, in different courts and and uh, among royal families, it was a bit to collect uh, people who had um, deformities and um, exceptional people. This is a similar similar concept that you can find in the story of the in the original story of Billy and the Beast. Uh, Tell, about more, tell more about that when I get into that story, but it's something that was happening a lot uh, in the 18th century among different royal families and different courts. It's quite horrid when you think about it nowadays, but it is believed that that is where the dwarves of this story come from. Then there is the Brother Scream version of Snow White Schneewittchen that is from the 19th century collection of um, German fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm and the Schneewittchen it really the, it begins with the queen sitting on a window frame that is made from ebony wood and she is um, sewing and she hurts her finger and the, there is a drop of blood that goes from the wind, well, finger to the snow and she look at, looks at the snow and she thinks in her mind I want to have a baby that is white, white as snow, red as blood and dark as the frame in my windows, the ebony wood. <laughs> I have recently found out that ebony wood is very dark wood that is used to make the black keys of the piano. Did you know that? It's very interesting. And, um, uh, the brother scream, the, most of the time they made people to believe that their fairy tales were original German fairy tales, which was really not the case. Many of the fairy tales came from Italy or from France. And when they said that they really went around talking to people asking about the fairy tales or collecting fairy tales or folk tales hearing them from mouth to mouth they didn't really do it 
that much most of the time they spend collecting their fairy tales in libraries. And I'm not a big fan of Brother Screen fairy tales because there is always religious undertone which I'm not very big fan of. If you know my channel, you probably probably are aware of that. But um yeah very mixed up relationship that I have with Brother Scream. Anyway, uh, when it comes to Snow White, Brother Scream, both Jacob and Wilhelm, they give credit for Musaus from Snewitchen. They say that it is uh, definitely inspired by Rishude, so they were very honest when it came to Snow White. And uh, it was one of probably the biggest inspiration for the Brother Scream fairy tale. Another story that was inspired that inspired uh, Brother Scream Snow White was a novel written by Albert Ludwig Grimm who was not related to Jacob and Wilhelm and not the Grimm. But, uh, he had another story Kindermärchen für Deutsches something like that can't remember the name of it. Anyway, there was a story also about a girl with evil stepmother and dwarves. And this story was probably also inspired by this story of Frischilde. But this story of Albert Ludwig, that was uh, written as a play so the children would act, children could act that play. So that might have also inspired Jacob and Wilhelm. And the biggest differences with uh, the Scream story is that they totally reverse the whole castle settings. So Snow White, Snow Witch and does not live in a castle. She lives, uh, she's a peasant almost, she lives in the middle of nowhere deep in the woods in a tiny cabin with seven dwarves who are all miners. Also the dwarves in the Brother Scream fairy tale they have a bit different origins than the stories than in the story of Frischilde. It's believed that those dwarves they were inspired by Eta poetry. The dwarves who were also like living in the mines and being the miners in Edda poetry, also the story of Nibelungen, and some folk tales, Old Norse folk tales, where dwarves are heavily connected to mountains and are a certain type of mountain spirits, Scandinavian mythology. <laughs> and that's something that inspired Brother Scream. But also, uh, when Jacob and Wilhelm lived in the 19th century Germany. Mining was a big business and there was lots of different mining towns and there were lots of children who worked in those mines in very poor conditions and many of them did not grow up because of the spending so much time in the mines so they end up being very short. They were called as poor dwarves occasionally. So Snow White in Brother Scream fairy tales, she become made for those seven dwarves. So when Snow White used to be the princess and the dwarves worked for her, now it's vice versa. And it also tells about the attitudes towards women in 19th century Europe and the position of women in 19th century Europe and this pressure that women had to get married and and um, really to be pretty decorations and all that. But um, then what there is also very important pretty much in all Brothers Green fairy tales is that they have, they create this very deep connection with nature in their fairy tales that they characters have a very deep connection with nature so there's lots of animals in Schneewittchen and animals that 
are different symbols in Snow White. There is owls, there is uh, there's owls and doves and lots of birds, little birds and uh, deer and all kinds of animals in this original story of Snow White. There's all kinds of folk tales. Around Snow White after Brothers Green Fairy Tale was published, those fairy tales were told mouth to mouth, so in a way a literal fairy tale turned into a folk tale. And not just Snow White, but, you know, any famous folk fairy tale has that kind of elements they have been turned into a folk tales when they've been retold again and again. In Finland we call Snow White as Lumikki and Lumi is Snow in Finnish. And there's also a very interesting story of Russian Snow White where the Snow White is a dragon killer, which is pretty awesome. I just recently made a video about that so I won't retell the whole story but I will put the link to the description box if you want to see that as well. And there is few people who have been, who are considered to be actual, original Snow White, to be the inspiration behind the whole legend of Snow White. And the most famous one is a German countess called Margaret von Waldeck. And she was born in 1533 in a town called Waldeck, surprise, and her father was Count Philip IV von Waldeck Wildungen, and her mother was called Margarete von Ostfrieslund, but Margaret, she died um, when children were very young, so Philip, he remarried a woman called Katar of Hatschfeld. And the story goes that Katar, oh, was, was that her name? Katarina? Katar? Sorry, getting confused. That the stepmother was very jealous to her stepchildren, especially Margareta, and she did not get along with her, and she did not get along with the stepmother. And when uh, Margareta was 16, she was sent to Brussels, so really the relationships in the family went very warm because they wanted her to leave the country altogether. So Margareta traveled to Brussels and there she married the Prince of Spain, Philip II, and she fell in love with the prince. But uh, her family, her parents disapproved this. Uh, relationship it was a it was politically inconvenient and uh, the relationship however continued until uh, 1554 Margareta he got mysteriously ill and rumors said that she was poisoned and then she died in the age of 21 and in the 18th century Europe, marriage really was, no sorry, 16th century Europe, marriage really was not between love, especially if you were, uh, if you had more higher status, marriage was a political decision. So it is uh, after Margareta died, mysteriously there was lots of rumors around um, Middle Europe and Southern Europe that she had been poisoned and the evidence historically point to the father of um, Prince Philip, the King of Spain, that she might have poisoned Margareta. Uh, stepmother, stepmother apparently could not have done that because she had died before Margareta had been killed. We don't know what happened, but it is believed that this might be the inspiration for the story of Richelde. Then there is another character that might be the inspiration for the, for the Snow White legend. Her name is Maria Sofia Margarete Katarina von Ertal. 
almost as many names as Dumbledore has. Bloody hell. And she lived, oh, she was born in 1729 in Lohr in Germany. And she was also a daughter of a count. No, daughter of a prince. Prince Philip Christor, Christoph von Ertal. And Maria had very nasty stepmother as well. And stepmother was Claudia Elizabeth Maria von Bünningen. She was Countess of Reichenstein. And uh, this stepmother had a magic mirror. And it is believed that this story is also something that inspired the Brothers Grimm fairy tale. And they, the, they lived in the town of Lore, which was very close to the town of Bieber, which is also a big mining town. Uh, the castle of von Etral family in Lore in Germany, that is nowadays a museum where you can see this magic mirror. One more place for me to do a visit someday. Then most famous Snow White that we probably now know is Disney Snow White from uh, 1937. Um, yeah, it's 80 years old film. Bloody hell. And she is the officially first Disney princess. Yay. And um, when, when Walt Disney was like all about doing the Snow White first full-length animation, people thought he was abs he had gone absolute nutcase and he had to pledge his own house to get funding for the movie and there was lots of um, enthusiasm and lots of fear when they when, uh, they made their first full-length animation and it became a huge success as we all know and started the whole Disney Imperium back then and I think Disney's Snow White is underappreciated as a princess because people don't tend to understand what was the time back then like uh, it's actually very very true to the Grimm Brother version the Disney version it's quite true to the Grimm Brother version and also, you we might now think that Snow White, she doesn't really, she's quite passive. When I was a child, I used to think she's really passive. I liked Belle and Aurora, <laughs> um, Ariel much more. Aurora, she's another passive princess. But when I got older and I read all these different variations of the Snow White, I think Disney Snow White is actually quite... Uh, close to the British screen, Snow White, but it also has this sassy side that there isn't in the uh, Grimm Brothers fairy tale. In that sense, it's more closer to this Russian folk tale, which, I, which is brilliant. But, um, you know, she's very kind, she's very sweet, and she's always very optimistic, always singing and speaking to birds. But then she has this sassy side and you know she's like 14 15 in the disney version i think she's 14 15 in the grimm's brother story as well and that was the time in 18th century europe when girls got married sometimes well, quite often and um, especially if it was a forced marriage you can see the sassiness of her especially in the scenes where she is with grumpy and where she, when she like, keeps the order uh, in the House of the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, I like that in Disney Snow White. But my favorite Snow White version is Jennifer Goodwin in Once Upon a Time. I'm a huge fan of her and Snow White and Charming, all the Charmings in Once Upon a Time. Just because she's a kick ass and she's a. Uh, Archer, Hunter, Princess Goddess. These were some stories about the origin of the Snow White fairy tale. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel for more fairy tale origins and share this 
video or any of my videos in social media if you enjoy them. Thank you for watching guys. I will see you soon. Bye.